Welcome to the second video of the Physics Playground prototype series. This project is a way for you to get started experimenting with physics in Unity. This is part of our beginner prototype series in which we'll explore creating small projects focused on game mechanics. We wanted to create a prototype that allowed players to experiment with Unity's physics system, which allows you to create a lot of complex gameplay with a few simple elements. In order to do this, we decided to create a camera that can fly around the playground room and allow the player to spawn objects and also destroy them. If you're interested to learn more about how we did that, check out the first video linked below. We also decided to make it possible in the project to change the gravity, freeze the physics of objects at any time, go into slow motion mode, and more. This allows players to really experiment with a lot of the crazy stuff that you can do with time and physics in Unity in a fun way. Here's a quick overview of what we'll look at in this video. How we achieve the slow motion effect in the prototype and how we allow the players to modify gravity while the game is running. For both features, we'll see how to change them via the editor and via script. In the next video of the series, we'll explore how we added effects and polish to the prototype. One of the goals of this prototype is to introduce Unity's physics system and to play with its different aspects. We wanted a way to show clearly how objects interact with each other and how collisions work. We decided to do this by adding a slow motion mode. In this mode, time is slowed down allowing us to understand better what happens in the scene. With the keyboard key Z, we enable or disable the slow motion mode. Later in the video, we'll see how we've implemented this via code. But first, let's look at how time is controlled in the Unity editor. In the project settings, there is a section called time. These settings control the timing of a Unity 3D project. In particular, to achieve a slow motion effect, we need to modify the time scale. The timescale property represents the scale at which time passes. It controls how game time proceeds relative to real time. When the timescale is 1.0, time passes at the same rate as a real world time. When the timescale is 0.5, time passes two times slower than the real world time. And the value of two makes time pass twice as quickly in Unity. Also, time scale can be set to zero. With a value of zero, the game is basically paused and physics interactions don't occur. In fact, Unity stops executing the scripting method responsible for all the physics calculations called fixed update. A value of zero is very useful to create pause menus. For example, when playing a single player video game, if we press pause, we expect that the game world stops and this can be done by setting the time scale to zero. Changing the time values in this project settings tab sets the properties of time globally. But in most scenarios, developers don't change the settings via the editor menu, but change the properties at runtime using a script. In this way, settings are changed dynamically and only when needed. For example, to handle our slow motion effect, we created a script called Physics Property Manager. You can find it attached to the manager's game object. The timescale key property is the keyboard key we want players to press to activate and deactivate the slow time mode. We chose the Z key as a default. The timescale property represents the new timescale value to which we want to switch to when we press the timescale key. We wanted a very slow effect that the player could clearly notice when it happened, so we set it to 0.1. This is the code necessary to change the time scale at runtime. In the first line, we wait and listen for the user input. If a user presses and releases a time scale key, C in this case, we set the time scale property of the time class to our value of 0.1. Time.timescale is the same property we've seen in the time settings of the project settings tab. This is just another way to access and modify it dynamically. If a user presses and releases the key again, we reset the value to the default of 
therefore removing the slow motion effect. We also modify another property of the time class called fixed delta time. This property, it's also called fixed time step in the time settings of the editor. Fixed delta time is the interval in seconds at which physics and other fixed frame rate updates are performed. The default value is for these updates to run at 50 times a second. If you change the time scale, it is also recommended to also change the fixed delta time property by the same amount. This avoids undesired behaviors and jerky movements, which can be caused by the two types of time going out of sync. Try to change the time scale value from the physics property manager and have fun by testing different use cases and scenarios. Another important physics feature we wanted to add in this prototype and let you play with is reversed gravity. In fact, by pressing the X key, we enabled the reversed gravity mode. Objects start moving upward, opening new scenarios and creating new interesting collisions. As we mentioned in the previous video, physics affects only game objects that have a rigid body component attached. Gravity is part of the physics system and so it only affects objects with rigid bodies. Like we've just seen for the time properties, the gravity is also modifiable from the project settings. This property is inside the physics tab of the project settings window. The gravity is represented by a three-dimensional vector and the default value is negative 9.81 on the y-axis. Having a negative value on the y-axis means that the objects will be pulled downward in world space by gravity. Having the possibility to modify the three axes means that we can set the gravity in any custom direction we choose, for example horizontally by modifying the x or z axis. As we said before, gravity influences each object that has a rigid body component on it and it is a global setting. But of course, when developing, there are situations where you don't need it to apply to particular game objects. The rigid body component can help us here. It has a flag to enable or disable gravity's influence on the game objects attached to it. Remember that since gravity is applied as a force to a rigid body, if we want a game object to be affected by gravity, the kinematic property has to be set to false. In the same script that we used for the slow motion effect, we also control the gravity vector. When the player presses and releases the X key, we assign a new vector 3 to the gravity property of the physics class. This time, instead of the default negative Y value, we set a positive value of plus 1. This action creates a reversed constant force along the Y axis and causes the rigid bodies to start moving upward. When the player presses and releases the X key again, we reset the gravity to the default value. You can have fun by experimenting with gravity and time in Unity, either via script or the project settings. You can also activate them at the same time to mix effects and create interesting situations. In the next video of the Physics Playground prototype, we will talk about how we polish the project including adding post-processing, particles, and audio. The Physics Playground prototype is available to download for free via the link in the description below. If you are interested in digging more deeply into the concepts shown, we have also recorded a slightly longer workshop video that is published on the Unity Learn site. You can find a link to that in the description as well. Hopefully this has given you some ideas for how to use these tools and techniques in your own games. Thanks for watching. Thank you.